Now, again, I started talking about the SHTF, and this is a, a continuation and a bit of a rehash of some of the things that I did in my stock charts show. I need to figure out a way to make the little guy explode. You, you guys remember airplane? <laughs> So the first thing you have to do is don't panic, breathe. I know, ha, 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 ha. <laughs> you come in, futures are off 60 points, and it's not looking pretty. You have to try to take a 30,000-foot view, okay? How bad is the market really bigger picture-wise? And if we have time, I'll show you like the TFM 10% system. And it was a long, long, long ways away from that. Doesn't mean that you're not going to exit some of your longs. You're not going to sit around and wait for a sell cycle in the market. But you have to, again, breathe and take a 30,000 foot view. And this is a hard one for me. Try not to look at your eroding equity. I know. Ha ha. In one account, I lost. I'm almost ashamed to admit it. I lost nearly half of what I gained this year on that ugly, ugly open, or at least by midday. And here's the irony of it all. I was feeling really, really bad last day or so. And then one account that I treat more, not that I don't fire off a day trade in it every now and then, because I do, I'm guilty of that. But I treat it more as, I try to keep it more investment oriented not that i don't trade because i took the arqq trade in that account but i try to like hang on as long as i can very similar to the core trading service and when things are going really well i really question the intraday trading i do because it does take its toll on you and i think i've aged about 10 years this week <laughs> But anyway, you want to try not to look at that eroding equity if you can. And if you do, just look at where you are and where you were. And like I said, in, in the, the account that I try not to do too much incredibly active trading in because it's a cash account, I was down, but I looked at when you when you first log in, it tells you where you are over the last couple of years. And it's like, well, looks like I'm still doing pretty damn good. And if I were just to walk in and see that and not know that it was a little bit higher when I came in or a lot of it higher, it would have really stressed me out. But try not to look at that eroding equity. I don't know, ha, 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 ha. <laughs> you have to enact a little bit of triage, okay? What stocks have exceeded your stocks and you're forced to get out? And we'll talk a little bit about that in one second. Which ones are a long ways away from stopping you out? I think we have one in the portfolio that we got in last July. So we've been in over a year. And that one and a couple other ones, as you'll see in one minute, were a long, long ways from stopping out. Yeah, it sucks. Don't get me wrong. But there's nothing to do on those positions. And as you'll see in a minute, if you do panic and get out of everything so you feel pretty good about it, they might all just come right back. Now, I'm not saying throw caution to win. If you're stopped out, you're stopped out. This is the hard part. You have to ask if there's an opportunity in this. And it's hard. It's hard to, it, it, you're going to have two emotions at one time. You're going to have the emotions of, oh, shit, I'm losing money. And then it's like, oh, shit, this could be the, a wonderful opportunity here. And I'll talk about that in one second. Unfortunately, the yogurt list, the opening gap reversal list that I look at every morning just really didn't have anything that looked like it was fantastic now one thing i want to mention is on big gaps down it's too late to hedge okay it's, it's the damage is done it's too late and before i go much further as i often preach in theory hedging sounds great in reality is not a hedge costs money and it's a constant drain on your account and you're not going to make a lot of money longer term if you always have some kind of hedge, like puts eroding away in your account, that constant decay will kill you. And you just can't do it. So don't think that you could you could hedge. I mean, there might be a case where if you're up some ridiculous amount in a stock or if it shoots up some ridiculous amount during the day, maybe you can go in and buy a few puts on it. 
because the normal retrace of the stock and you know ARQQ, I doubt they have puts on that. I didn't even look. I figured they didn't. But you know, maybe when it's at 40 something dollars a share and you're in at half of that price or much, much lower at least, and you your stop is 10 points away, you can maybe think about a situation like that. But I would encourage you to really, really, really tread lightly. I don't want to talk out of both sides of my mouth. There might be a, a, a case every now and then where if something goes parabolic, you might want to you might want to hedge it a little bit, or even better, just peel off a few shares if that happens, as opposed to getting involved with that hedging business. Now, the other thing, is there a possibility of the mother of all opening gap reversals in the overall markets and in individual issues? So along the lines of triage, like I said earlier, we've got one open from last summer, a few from January, a one from January, one from last November, and those stops are a long ways away. And as you can see, the gains are pretty good in those positions, and there's nothing to do other, other than just grin and bear it. Now, you do have to, again, you can't throw caution to the wind, you do have to be willing to get out of the way. And I said, oh, I'm gonna buy this stock. I bought a few hundred shares. It wasn't enough to really, really make a lot or lose a lot. And I just decided, well, what the hell? It's an IPO, let's give it a shot. And again, I took a position size much smaller than normal just to have a position in it. And I paid for that, obviously. So my stop was here, so I got stopped out. It happens, okay? You have to be willing to clean up your portfolio because you don't know if it's going to keep going further. Here's the problem. Let's say you get out of something like this at 25.50 and you check it a few days later it's at 30 or wherever. It really pisses you off. But how many times do you get out of something and it just keeps on imploding? I know I can't think of which stock it is, but I had a few recently that I got out of and they bounced a little bit right afterwards. But by the end of the day, they were down another 10 points. And believe me, if I'd have written it down another 10 points, and if memory serves, I had at least a thousand dollars, thousand dollars, I wish I had at least a thousand shares, uh, if not in one account over multiple accounts. But I, I think it was a very sizable position. And had I not exited it, I would have been down tens of thousands of dollars, or at least ten thousand dollars by the end of the day. And Maybe that's not a lot to you, but that's plenty enough money to me. Now, it is kind of frustrating, like in this particular case, it turned right back around and went straight back up. But you can't ever forget that he who fights and runs away lives to fight another day. So make no bones about it. It sucks. Momentum trading often ends badly, but it's what you signed up for. I've talked about that ad nauseum. And I'm going to flesh it out in a really good example here in just one second. You gotta remind yourself that it's where the money is. The only way to make real money is through capturing longer term trends. Like I said, my account where I just do the trend following stuff as much as possible and just fire off an intraday trade just when I can't stand it. And, and one reason I, I don't do a whole lot of uh, intraday trading there is because it eats away at my cash balance, at my settled funds. And if I fire off three or four day trades, I might wipe out all my available equity and come in the next day. And even though I have the money in my account, it's not cleared, okay? And it adds up pretty quickly if you're doing a lot of day trades. But the real money is in the longer term trends. And and I I used to really, really preach against day trading. and Earlier this week, I was thinking, you know, maybe you start preaching against it again. And what I'm doing is intraday trading, like we talked about quite a bit, the Russian dolls, occasionally some ETFs or reverse ETFs and S&P futures. But I'm trying not to be glued to a screen all day. Today, I actually went on a bike ride for an hour. First time I left the office probably in a month. <laughs> so I'm trying to detach myself again and just put them on, forget about them and, and, and let them go. I know. Haha. Huh? But the real money is in those longer term trends, as I've been saying quite a bit lately. 
been talking with a client and it's kind of like, and he, he day trades way too much, but it's like, he was looking at, he's telling me about these stocks. He got in a few of them from the Landry list recently, like INMD and all. And he's absolutely printing, absolutely printing money. And I think it's got him questioned in some of the intraday stuff too. So the real money is in those longer term trends. Now, I think this is a big one here. And this goes for crypto, this goes for name your market, okay? But the reason trend trading works is because sometimes it don't. <laughs> and if you think about it, that makes a lot of sense. And uh, TASK, T-A-S-K comes to mind, I think was a really good TKO. And it's like whoever bought late in the game was probably aggravated because they got shaken out. And that's why the stock was able to go back up. And I'll talk a little bit about, about that one in one second. Now, the other thing you could do if you have to, okay, or if, God forbid, you come in and let's say your position gaps down way down here. Well, the damage is already done. So you could say, you know what, I'm in trouble here. Let me watch this market. And if it begins to drop any further, I'm going to get out. And you have to have an uncle point in mind, as I preach quite often. Go in and watch. I think I talk a lot about damage control in the Q&A. There's also in the members area, there's a lot of stuff on damage control. And I see a lot of questions that I get asked all the time. And that's two reasons. One, in case I get hit by a beer trip. And number two, so I don't have to keep saying the same thing over and over. And I know everybody's like, Dave, you beat the dead horse. But you'd be surprised at how many people, people who A, should know better, people who just don't want to hear certain things, and, and people who aren't willing to go in and watch the videos because it's much easier to just ask me. I don't mind being asked, but the information's out there. And I want it out there. And again, in case I get hit by a beer truck. But anyway, it's in the members area, not to soft sell you on that. Everybody here is already a member, that's fine. Uh, anyway, so if it gets lower and starts to rally, you might actually be able to put in a hard stop, okay, at your uncle point or wherever that the case may be, and below the intraday low, and then hang on, and you might actually be able to hold that position until the end of the day. And if it, especially if it goes positive on the day, you might just have survived a trend knockout type of move. But make sure you do have a stop in place and it probably should be a hard stop. Let's say this thing gaps down, begins to rally, you put in a hard stop, then you move on to the next thing that needs to be dealt with. You can't obsess over one stock, okay, while the shit is hitting the fan and forget about six or seven other stocks, and then also forget about possible opportunities in all this, which would be similar to the opening gap reversal. So just real quick, this was Academy we put on way last summer. We sold half and then we've been trend following forever. And the point I was making here is, notice that there were plenty of corrections both in time and in price along the way, which tests your patience and your emotional fortitude, right? And a knockout bar like this, and what did I just say earlier? The, wind, the reason trend following works is because sometimes it don't, okay? I bet the whole world was poo-pooing academy at this time. Oh, pandemic's over or whatever reason they, they gave for academy to go up. I didn't think about the pandemic when I bought it. But in hindsight, I think it was a pandemic play. People wanted some, people like, you know, F this, I'm tired of being inside. You know, now you know how I feel all the time. <laughs> I got out today, like, what's that bright ball in the sun? That, that's the sky, you know, what's that bright, shiny object? Anyway, but so far, so good. And during those slides, I'd be willing to bet a bunch of shorts piled on this market trying to catch a top, and they got squeezed out. People have said before, I don't know who specifically, but they said that trends exist as long as people fight them. And I never fully wrapped my head about, around that, but if you think about it, if shorts are fighting the trend and nervous Nelly Longs are bailing out and then come back into the market and shorts get squeezed out, then that could perpetuate the trend. And we had a little drawdown here, obviously on a slide, 
by the way, kind of an opening gap reversal there. Just kind of seeing that. That's kind of cool. Wasn't big enough to be tradable, but pretty cool. Now, as I said yesterday, if you do get stopped out up at 35 and you bought it down at 16 or thereabouts, you end up making $7,000 and that's on a 100K account which obviously is 7%, 7% move on account, that's a good move. And the stock itself, you made 113%. Now, hopefully, a word we should never use in this business, but hopefully this thing continues to run and we stop out at a much, 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 much higher level. All trend trades eventually end badly. All trades eventually end badly. Now, if you're upset uh, at giving up some of those open profits, let's say it went down to 35, stop us out, and you made $7,000 and that pisses you off, I am I I feel horrible about that. So please send me the money so you can feel better. And in 30 years of all of my speaking, no one has ever sent me a check when they felt bad about losing some open profits and made a lot of money on a trade but please feel free to send me the money if it's pissing you off. Now, here's the hard part, and it's hard for me, believe me, because I'm like, oh, shit, oh, shit, oh, shit. And, well, I'm sure I'm sure I'm going to get demonetized on this video, huh? <laughs> but the hard part is, while everything is kind of coming unglued, you have to ask yourself, are there any opportunities? And again, you want to look for something like an opening gap reversal. You've got, especially if it's it's like something that's in a strong, strong trend, and by the way, it's only opening gap reversals I like to play. Strong uptrends and a pullback or at worse, a a drop, a gap down from all-time highs. I'll trade those too. But look for that gap lower and then look for a reversal. And that's the opening gap reversal or as ogres as one of you guys calls them. I forget who names who's named what, but anyway. Now, I was a little hesitant to show this, especially my Trading Simplified show, because s and Futures, I have a love-hate relationship with them. As when, when a friend of mine joked up here, he once joked, he goes, yeah, you love them, because I said that once. He goes, yeah, you love them. They hate your account. And I did really well on s and P's for a while, and then I get chewed up. And if I could figure out how not, how not to get chewed up, you never see my fat ass again. And as I've said ad nauseum, one of you guys was asked me a whole bunch of questions about E-minis, and I think you thought I was being a little aloof, and the reality, it is, reality is they're very, very tough to trade. I seem to be able to do okay, though, when the market is kind of making a route, in other words, just kind of going in one direction, and the morning of the slide, I came in, and I'm like, you know what, this thing looks like it's going to keep on sliding, so I shorted. And I put in a trailing stop and I work out with a couple of friends now. And I went off to their little makeshift gym and I got stopped by the time I was got back to the office. I was stopped out at a small game, then in the poke in the eye. Now, it did look like we were going to have the mother of all opening gap reversals. So I figured it was worth a stab, went in, immediately got stopped out for a loss. When the market began to make a route lower, I went short again. And what did I say earlier? Buy stuff that goes up, sell stuff that goes sell stuff that goes down. And I wasn't necessarily trying to hedge my other bets, but I was like, you know what? This thing is sliding. Let me put on some some short futures. This way, at least if the market continues to implode, I'll make a little bit money on the downside, and that might help to offset the money I'm losing on the long side. And then I through trailing stops and profit targets, I ended up covering down about 30 points lower, at least on the remainder of them. And 30 points is not a bad move in the futures for what it's worth. Now, I do have a pattern I call race to the finish. And especially on a day like the slide, I guess that was Monday, right? My, my days are all messed up. But on a day like Monday, the market is so oversold and everybody is just selling, 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 selling. Well, the shorts have to cover and the shorts run for cover, no pun intended, as soon as the market begins to rally a little bit, especially late in the day. And 
I haven't fleshed it out fully yet, but if you pay attention to the last, I'd say 10 minutes or so of the market start, about 15 minutes before the close, if you have the luxury of doing this, pay attention to the futures and see what they do for the last 15 minutes, especially the last 10 minutes. And a lot of times you can catch a little pop going into the close and your risk can be fairly, fairly tight. Maybe the bottom of the bar that you're getting in on, okay? But anyway, I ended up getting out covering shortly after the close and made a little bit on that, maybe 15, 20 points, better than poking the eye. So I'm not showing you this to brag. I'm just showing you that sometimes, especially if the market makes a bit of a route, you can make a little bit of money on the short side. So at an okay trade, I made a loss, had a loss, I should say. I guess I made that loss. Made a little on the, on the downside again, 20 points plus 30 points. And then one trade, 20 points, same trade, 10 points lower. And then a little little run into the close, again, 15 to 20 points there. So better than the Pokemon eye. So that was pretty good. So there might be an opportunity, even opening gap reversal, I did lose money. I think I lost money overall chasing the index shares because the problem is the gap is so big to the downside. It's like what's left in those shares. But if it does look like you're going to have a route lower, yes, take a look at the index shares. And yes, take a look, obviously, at the futures. Now, I want to show you, not that you want to throw caution to the wind, but like I said earlier, you want to just look at where your stops are especially on your longer term trend following positions. Remember, we start off with a swing trade and God willing, we end up with this longer term trade, this free rolling trade, so to speak. And that has a lot of open risk to it, but it also has open and hopefully unlimited gains. And I know you, you guys are probably sick of me talking about it, but we stopped out of one early this year for a 500% gain. And that was like a 24% or 23%, I forget exactly how much, close to 25%, somewhere between 20 and 25% gain in the overall portfolio, 20 something thousand dollars on a 100K account on the position sizing with only a 2% risk. So that's a 25 to one reward. People are like, well, Dave, let's just trade for a two to one or four to one or five to one. Well, you don't know that going in, and in fact, you're likely, let's say you're trading for five to one, well, you're five times more likely to get stopped out than you are to make that five to one gain. But anyway, getting back to the service. So before the slide on Friday, we had open profits, counting some swing trades, some closed swing trades, okay? So open profits were what, 28, 594, and you got one, two, three, four, you got five swing trades, so that's $5,000 that were closed out on this particular day. But we track the entire position. But anyway, 28, 594 on Friday going into close, or right after close, feeling pretty good about everything, life is good. Let's go have a fun weekend, right? Now, after Monday, the portfolio dropped to 24,691, but you have to count in the thousand dollars that got stopped out on DATS so we can compare apples to apples. So that was ugly, but nothing stopped out in the portfolio. Now, that's not always the case. There will be days where you get cleaned out, okay? But luckily, that was not one of them. Now, Here's what we look like today. And again, we had that thousand dollars back. 27,642, which is not quite 28K if you did the math. So it's not quite a do-over, but you can do it. So hope, and I never should say that word, but I say it, right? But hopefully we will exceed the pre-slide or whatever you want to call it but we'll exceed that by a very large margin and that'll show you that you just followed a plan i can't guarantee you this will always work i do see a lot of people get a little nervous and go 100 percent cash 
I think if you are to make any real money longer term, if you go back and look at that, that ASO chart, for instance, there were plenty of times where you could have justified exiting that stock. And then you could maybe when the market's imploding on a Monday, like we had this week, you're thinking, you know what, this is, I'm getting an ulcer. I can't stand it. I'm just going to have to get out of everything. Well, you're going to be very disappointed if you do that. Not every time, obviously once or twice, you're going to be right. But longer term, I guarantee you, you're going to exit some really good trades. Now, this is not to say throw caution to the wind. And I would never throw anybody in the bus. But many years ago, there was someone trading a little bit different methodology than mine, but it did involve technical analysis. And they were absolutely printing money. This was in 99. And I remember in 2000, when the market began to implode, one of its stocks in particular was down 50 bucks. And I'm like, what are you doing? And he says, oh, I can't lose my position. That's like, so you're going to give it, you're going to let it slide 50 points against you? That's a little bit, well, even ludicrous would say that's ludicrous, right? <laughs> but that's crazy. Now, if you look at some of the stops in here, yeah, they're pretty wide, but they're not 50 points away, okay? 